Hi, my name is Noah Johnson and I'm a developer from Orem, Utah. I'm really excited to talk to you today about three different approaches that you can take in Remix. So to get started, we're gonna look at how you can implement CSS using Tailwind, styled components, and just straight up CSS. For each of these approaches, we'll take a look up at the setup, the developer experience, maintenance and customization, and the performance. So in order to do that, I'd like to introduce our test project uh, for this experiment, our very own Remix Stacks. Now what this is, it's just a test website to be able to look at some of the Remix Stacks that if you've not seen before, go and check it out because it's really cool. So the original three, Blues, Indie, and Grunge, and I added my own Reggae, Disco, and Polka. Now this is just a single page that has some cards, a grid, navigation, uh, in order to see how you can implement CSS using these three different methods. So let's dive right in. And first up, we're gonna take a look at Tailwind. Now, Tailwind has a pretty straightforward setup process with Remix. It's really well documented and it only takes a few lines to get going. You can take a look in the Remix docs and follow along and it's really easy to get up and going. You just install Tailwind, update its configuration, add a few scripts to your package.json, and then import the CSS from the file that Tailwind will generate. In each additional component that you use Tailwind, no additional setup is needed. You're just going to start using the utility classes and Tailwind will continue to watch and update the CSS file whenever there are changes. Uh, additional setup that might be helpful if you're using Tailwind uh, is configuring Prettier to automatically organize the classes to provide consistency. So how is the developer experience with Tailwind? Now this part is awesome. Uh, for those unfamiliar, Tailwind will provide utility classes that are easy to use across your entire application. It makes it so that you can easily do responsive breakpoints, a consistent design system, uh, automatic vendor prefixes, and more. You're able to just jump in and start styling your application. So at first glance, um, if we jump back and kind of look at one of the pages, it might seem like it's just a lot of gibberish and uh, a lot of mess within your markup. But honestly, once you start using it, it's really nice and you can see how Tailwind maps to the CSS that it's using. So you're not losing that underlying CSS by just saying, oh, it's a card, but rather you're actually crafting your user interface however you want it. So the experience is great. Um, and next up, what's the maintenance and customization like? Within the Tailwind, con Tailwind config, you're able to look at uh, and customize color palette, spacing, animations, um, and a lot more. It comes with a lot of defaults, and so it's really nice because you can just get up and going, um, but that doesn't mean that you're locked into exactly how it looks. I would say the one risk of maintenance with Tailwind is if you ever wanted to switch off, then it could take a little bit of migration. The nice thing is that the docs show what every single utility class maps to in CSS. So you can grab the CSS and migrate it over, which I actually did within this project, but it can get a little bit messy. Also, there are times where you're kind of rewriting the same CSS over and over again instead of abstracting it out into a new component just because, oh, well, it's pretty easy to do and I can just update it in all these places if I need. That could just be a personal problem, but it's something that I've seen uh, you can run into when you're using Tailwind. Lastly, let's just look at the performance and the performance is great. How Tailwind works is it's going to look through and it's only gonna create a CSS file with the CSS rules that you need. When you look at performance, uh, we have just one request to the CSS here uh, and this will kind of make more sense as we continue on, uh, but it still means that you're having a great user experience uh, when it comes to load times because it's just delivering just the amount of CSS that you need. So that's Tailwind. Let's take a look at the setup and just a little bit of the code. So within Tailwind here, or within our Remix application, you just set up the configurations you get a tailwind, tailwind, tailwind config, excuse me, um, which you're able to customize things such as the font family, such as the colors. And then within your root route, then you can import the styles or you just import the CSS file and put it into your links function. 
This other stuff is for our custom Google font that we are going to use. Um, and then you're ready to go. So here in the root route, we're able to do some styling. And then within the index page, you don't have to import anything else, but rather you can just kind of start going um, and adding in the different styling that you want. Uh, one thing to note that I've ran into before is that whenever you're wanting to pass in, for example, a custom uh, class based on, for example, this is the background, uh, then sometimes if you think that you could do something just like um, blue 500 and just replace the blue part, sometimes it doesn't pick that up and it won't add it to your um, CSS file. So instead, uh, I generally use a dictionary or something else just to be able to track, okay, when it's blue, this is the class name that I wanna use. But that's basically all there is to it within Tailwind. Real quick before we move on, let's just take a look at this uh, page. Uh, you'll see that we have different hover states um, and then also just a very default uh, or a basic uh, layout. But with Tailwind, we have that up and going really quick uh, and it's a great experience. So now let's jump back over and let's look at styled components. So with styled components, if you've never used it before, it's a CSS and JS approach where you are creating components and well, styling them. So here's an example is you have like a content wrapper and you call styled from styled components, give it the semantic element div or image header, um, and then you're able to pass in CSS and then use that component. So with setup, it's not too difficult. The uh, Remix documentation has uh, the different lines of code that you need to add. Uh, and it doesn't, it's not that much harder to set up than Tailwind, though it does feel a little bit more involved. And that's due to the nature of using server-side rendering uh, with this CSS and JS approach. So you can get it set up and going pretty easily. Um, for each component, as you set it up, it does feel like you're setting up a little bit more, doing a little bit more boilerplate. And that's because you're creating a component for every single time that you wanna add styles. So what does the developer experience look like? Well, it's not horrible, and some people really like the experience of um, styled components or this component-based. I think it fits in really well with what React is, and it fits um, the React ecosystem and methodology really well. Um, and I have used it in the past and really enjoy it. But some of the downfalls of that is that you don't know exactly where styles uh, are being applied, uh, though that could be a downfall in uh, Tailwind as well. But you're creating all of these different components. And so sometimes you're saying, oh, I need to create a new name for a component. And how am I going to name this? And you could get a little bit lazy with that. You might forget the HTML5 semantics and just... Uh, because when you're looking through the markup, you're just looking at all of these components instead of kind of the underlying HTML5. And I think some of the benefits, though, are that you're able to use things um, that are familiar to those that use CSS preprocessors like SAS, where you can do media queries inside of the styled component uh, that target the styled component itself, or uh, nesting and other uh, functionality like that. With maintenance and customization, uh, with it being just CSS that you're using inside of each of these components, it's pretty easy to migrate to something else that's also using CSS. There are some changes such as nesting, uh, but overall, uh, if you look at portability to another uh, another system, it's, it's pretty good. Um, with styled components, you also have a theme provider that you can use. Uh, that you can then create a theme that you can use within each styled component. But you could also use CSS variables, um, and that's also great to use because you can use global styles within, uh, within styled components as well. So looking at the performance, this was a little bit slower than uh, what Tailwind was doing. It's interesting that you can see that there's only 18 requests because it's not actually delivering a CSS file, but rather that's uh, bundled in, from my understanding, with the JavaScript. Um, and so it still loads uh, 
and finishes pretty quickly, but it is a little bit slower than the Tailwind, or as we'll see in the future, just the CSS approach. So let's take a quick look at what this looks like. So within the component itself, we have our data coming in, just as before. And sorry, it's jumping around a little bit here. So we have different components that we create, such as the content wrapper, this header, and that's a styled component. And so we're using the exact same styles that we used before. And so the website looks exactly the same. We're passing in sometimes variables using this style, um, just passing in style and passing in a variable that we can then use uh, within the styled components. And if you're familiar with it, you can go and look more, but you can pass in um, properties to uh, the styled components in a few different ways. And so then within here, each of these styled components then has uh, the associated styles. So, and then you can see things like doing nesting uh, and you still have this scope CSS, but you also have some benefits of uh, what you would see in a CSS preprocessor. So overall, um, you, know, you can do media queries inside as well, kind of like I mentioned before. Overall, it's a good experience and you're able to then take these components and you can make a component library where you're able to move it over into any styled component project, uh, which is a benefit with this, a benefit with Tailwind as well. So that is looking at uh, styled components. Next, and last, let's just look at using straight up CSS. Now this is the simplest approach um, when you think about uh, setup and everything like that, because with setup, the initial setup is done. You just import a CSS file. For individual components though, the setup is a little bit more tedious at times. For each route, you have a links function that you can use, like we looked at before, uh, that you can then import a CSS file. But let's say that you wanted to create some CSS just scoped to your component. You would import the CSS into that file, export the links back up to whatever route you're using, import the links, and then uh, use that within the, the, uh, the route. Uh, let me just pull up a quick demo of that. So we're gonna take a look really quickly at the Remix docs um, as I kept the project pretty simple um, and didn't need to use this use case, but I think it's important to look at. So within a component, you would create the styles, import them, um, and then within the route, you would import those links from your component and pass those into the route links. Then you're getting the benefits of uh, prefetching and the other things we'll talk about, but you also can then keep your styles with your component. So this may at first seem like a little bit of unnecessary setup, but I like the approach. Uh, moving on to, and to kind of talk a little bit more about that, I like the approach because it feels, so you're still being able to co-locate your styles with your component. Um, and like we'll talk about with maintenance and customization, that brings some benefits. So with the developer experience, yeah, the setup can be a little bit tedious. Sometimes it feels a little bit boilerplate-y, um, but you do get the benefits such as prefetching. You're not using uh, an outside library that you never know what could happen with the maintenance of that. Tailwind and styled components are well maintained. They have awesome teams behind them. Uh, but with just straight up CSS, you know that that's going to work in the browser. And with Remix, always touting uh, based in these web fundamentals, it is a great experience. So the developer experience is just like writing CSS. For me, I really like that experience. For some others, it may be like, no, I want a little bit, I want that abstracted a little bit away. For example, with uh, tail, Tailwind. Uh, also, you can't really pass props into CSS, though you could do things like CSS variables. So uh, overall, it's a really great experience of just using CSS and having the benefits of scoped CSS and prefetching that Remix does really well. So looking at maintenance and customization, we kind of hit on this earlier, uh, but this approach is really easy to maintain or switch. CSS is not going anywhere. Um, CSS files aren't going anywhere. And so this approach to me kind of feels like a web components approach. Instead of picking React or Vue, you're building a web component library or 
a web component that's easily portable to anything that you're, you're working on um, just because it's based in those standards. And for performance, uh, it's very similar to Tailwind. Actually, it was um, just a little bit faster than Tailwind. Uh, you just have your CSS file and you could also do prefetching with that. And it's great. You can just see that it fits perfectly into the React uh, or to the, the Remix application. So let's just take a quick look at uh, the CSS approach within this application. So within the application, we're taking a look here and you're just importing the styles from a CSS file um, and using that same links function to be able to use that within this route. Uh, it looks kind of like a blend of the two. You have these class names uh, that tie back to the CSS, of course, um, but you're still getting that semantic element since you're able to see what the uh, HTML markup looks like. Um, you can pass in kind of uh, CSS variables like we did with the styled components and then use those within the CSS. And so it's a really nice way to then be able to still have and know what CSS is being applied to what route um, with the scoped CSS here, uh, but also then just have the benefits of having a CSS file that you can use. Um, and then within the root, you can have uh, a root CSS file and import that in here, and that's used kind of similar to what we looked at with Tailwind. So these approaches have a lot in common with a little bit of differences. So that leads me back to some final thoughts. So all approaches here when we're looking at Remix are valid. You may be coming with a background that you used a CSS and JS like styled components or uh, many of the other libraries that are out there before. And styled components is easy to get set up, has really good performance and allows you to bring in the previous work or just continue with your previous workflow that you're used to. Using straight up CSS does add a little bit of boilerplate and you're not getting some of those uh, benefits. You can set up a design system using CSS variables that I didn't mention, but uh, you are having to do a little bit more of that manual process yourself, but you're getting great performance uh, as well as interoperability between uh, who knows what's coming in the future and you just have a CSS file and those rules that you can use. Tailwind is honestly a joy to work with. I know that the team kind of says a lot of times, oh yeah, Tailwind, just, just use Tailwind. Um, and I really like it. I know the first time that I started using Tailwind, I thought, man, my HTML just looks really messy here. I don't know what the big deal is, but as I've come back to it, whenever I use a project that doesn't have it, sometimes I'm like, oh, I just wanna get going. I have this vision or I have a mock-up and I know what I want it to look like and I don't wanna spend so much time in my workflow uh, going and just setting up this boilerplate. So that's a great experience. Um, each time I start a Remix project, I just use that or when you use Stacks, a lot of them have a Tailwind just ready to go. But in the end, all of this is about an awesome user experience. And a, a great developer experience does lead into that because you're being able to build and prototype and, and ship out your projects and it just feels great. Um, but think about the users that are going to be using your site and with any of these approaches, make sure that it's a great experience for them. Uh, and so that's kind of my final thoughts here that CSS, and creating amazing user interfaces creates user experiences that are a joy to work with. Uh, if you're interested in this, you can look at uh, my GitHub repo. Uh, if you follow me, J. Noah Johnson on Twitter, I'll be tweeting out uh, the, the repository. Um, and so you can definitely check that out. So thank you.